Okay, we've got our octopus designed. And in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it all out in Fusion 360 so that it's ready to be cut. Uh, I, I want to do this in Fusion 360. You could do this in other software. You could export each piece individually. But I want to do it all in Fusion 360 so um, that I can adjust the thickness of the stock material. I don't have a lot of options here in town for material. I found some and it's just under three millimeters. So we may cut this and find that it needs to be narrower on that piece and being able to go in and adjust it in fusion and then spit that out finished will save us a lot of time instead of having to adjust it then export every piece then reset up the whole template in Illustrator or something like that. Now, of course you may be able to do driven parameters within Illustrator. Uh, I, I don't know, I've never used it. I'll have to figure that out soon. So let's get started here. Uh, we can see here we've got the octopus lamp. Let me just go back here. And it doesn't look right because everything's kind of flat there and that's just because of the way I designed it. There was no point in wasting time laying it all out flat uh, or laying it all out in all of the notches just for visuals before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to do a save as because I might butcher this. Um, whoops, I keep hitting the same button. I might butcher this, so I'm going to do a save as and do Octo Lamp Laser Fit. Okay, so the process that I've picked up from watching YouTube videos is I'm going to create a new component here and I'm going to call this Laser Stock. <clears throat> And what this is going to be is the maximum stock piece that can fit in my bed. I'm going to draw a rectangle and we'll go to our top plane here. And I know that my laser bed is about 300 millimeters by 250. So I'm going to say 295 millimeters by 245 millimeters. And now we have a square that's representative of our stock. There's probably a smarter way to do this, but this is just the way that's going to work for me for today, I hope. So I'm going to press pull this, and I'm going to do one millimeter. This doesn't matter how thick it is. I'm going to be cutting those shapes out of it, and we're going to be exporting a 2D drawing of just the profile shapes. Um, so it doesn't really matter how thick it is. I just want it thicker than the part, or thinner than the parts, so they cut all the way through it, if that makes sense. I don't know. Again, there's probably a smarter way if any of you who are gurus want to hop in and let me know. Um, so let's get started here. I'm going to hide the bulb and then let's start with the base. We only need one of these bases, I think, because we're going to actually do two templates here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure the base is active. I'm going to go to align and I'm going to align hello wake up computer oh I'm going to switch it so I can select the face I want to align this face to this face and it looks like it is aligned already because they're both on the ground plane so I'm going to I don't know what I've done here let's move by whole component what is going on why is it giving me individual bits and pieces. Uh, I guess that was just a display. I'm just going to move it over here for my own mental well-being and so I can take a peek and see how the alignment is. And it is not lined up at all, so apparently I missed a step. Let's try that again. Uh, let's go to modify, align. And now i got to try to squeeze under here. I want to align this face with that face. And then if we look at it sideways, we should see they're aligned. Beautiful. That's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. I guess I just uh, clicked wrong before. We're going to do that for each of these pieces. Uh, so let's do tentacle one, modify, align, select that face and that face. And sometimes you'll notice that it doesn't align quite right, like it flipped it over, just do it again. There and there. Now it's aligned. And then I'm going to move this. 
I'm going to end up rearranging all these here in a bit, uh, but I don't really want them overlapping. I don't know, just for my own mental well-being. Again, modify, align this face to this face. I'm going to do it again because I did the same thing where I flipped it. You know what, I'm not even going to move this one yet. I'll wait till I've got them all set up. Tentacle 4, modify, align this face to this face, and again. There's probably a way to s reduce the number of steps here. Tentacle 5, modify, align this face to this face, and again, this face to this face. Okay, now they're all aligned. So let's go to the top view and zoom out. And this is my stock that I'm working with. And I want to fit them all on here in the most efficient way possible, or at least a moderately efficient way. So let's just start moving them around and see. Now I'm only moving them by grabbing these little handles and staying within this plane of existence. And I should probably actually, even when I'm rotating, be using um, numbers as well instead of manually grabbing stuff. I don't want that stock. Ah, I don't want that stock active. I want, we'll turn the base active. Okay, so how are we going to arrange you? We'll do 90 degrees that way and put you uh, down there for now. Whoops. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So let's start squeezing these in here a little tighter. I think if I put this there, then I can grab this sucker and maybe move it down here in this gap. Oh yeah. Beautiful. And then we'll get, no. We'll get this guy and we'll bring this down here. I wonder if this would fit down inside that. Nope. But if I turn it this way, I might be able to squeeze it there. And what this is going to do is this is going to allow us to use much smaller stock on our final version, especially because I've left some spaces here on the side. Okay. So now what I have to do is I have to project, or I have to cut these out of this stock. But first, I'm going to edit the stock down pretty close to um, oh boy, everything disappeared when I tried to edit that. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll leave it alone. I'll stop that sketch and I'll save it. So I guess I won't edit that stock, but what I am going to do is cut these out. Uh, so let's go to modify and let's go to combine and we've got cut, we've got this selected, so let's select our boy that's so confusing how it shows the their original locations but I think that worked. Now if I hide them Yay! Okay, so this is our stock. Now we need to test. So if we look, this is what we're going to be cutting. Now let's zoom way in here and let's test something. See this here? 
if we go to modify change parameters and we set our um, stock width and let's uh, change this to six millimeters see how those get wider that's what we want we want those to get wider oh but we're getting warnings uh oh I don't know if this is gonna work so let's go back to three millimeters and they go back so we now have that now let's export a DXF of this sucker is that how that works oh no I didn't I have to like project this or something a cut isn't gonna give me a sketch I should have projected it I think create sketch huh Ooh, I'll bet I could create a sketch from this. Stop sketch. I don't know, let's see what this is. Let's export this as a DXF. We'll call this Octotest1. Let's open Illustrator and look at it. So test one in Illustrator, original size. We just have a square. So we have to do something else. What did I do wrong here? How can I export this as a sketch? Maybe I project all of this into Geometry. I want to select this geometry. I want to project it. Ah. What's the deal here? Sketch. Okay, I'm projecting this, but I'm having to select all the faces individually, which seems incredibly inefficient. Wow, this is, I'm doing this wrong, somehow. What am I doing wrong here? Maybe if I... Can I just... Ah, there. I just double clicked on the surface of that and I project it. What am I projecting to? What is that part of the sketch now? Here, let's save as a DXF. Octo test two. And let's drag that into AI. Let's close this one and drag that into AI. Okay. <gasps> Nothing. Stop sketch. Octo test three. This is going to get old. Maybe, what am I missing here? 
What am I missing here? What are you? Where do you exist? You're a sketch. You exist. But you're not any of these. Oh, you're just here. I was exporting the wrong one. Octo test. This should be it, theoretically. Yes! Yes! So, in theory, if I cut the stock down, uh, this should cut and should fit together just fine. Let's give it a try. Okay, it's, uh, it's all designed, it's a DXF, it's ready to cut. I think there's some major inefficiencies there with how I, uh, how I got those curves projected on that thing to export the DXF, you know, to actually make that sketch. I gotta figure that out. I'm gonna play with that and see if I can't do it a whole lot easier and save myself some time on the next one. But if you watch the next video, we'll be doing some test cuts and we'll actually uh, see how this works on the machine. See you then.